Hello, this is John Robles. I'm speaking with Dr. Edward Herman. He's a professor emeritus of finance at the Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania, and he's also the author of several books, namely The Manufacturing Consent. He wrote that with Noam Chomsky and The Srebrenica Massacre, Evidence, Context, and Politics. Hello, Ed. How are you this evening? Very well, John. Thank you. It's a great pleasure speaking with you. Um, my first question is about the Srebrenica massacre and the way that the establishment manipulated the media. Can you tell us or give us some insights on that? Well, the Srebrenica massacre, actually, I, put, I always put it in quote marks, mm-hmm. because actually there were lots of massacres in the Srebrenica area. The one that before July 1995, there were vast numbers of Serbs killed by poor Muslim, Bosnia Muslim forces who went out of Srebrenica. And one estimate is that there were more than 150 Serb villages that were totally wiped out. And one study gives actually the names of 2,383 Serb civilians who were killed between 1992 and July 1995. So they would call that the first Srebrenica massacre. Then in July 1995... So just to be very clear here, these were Serbs that were being killed. Yes, yes. We're talking about 2,383 Serb civilians killed Mm -hmm. before July 1995. And uh, the Bosnian Serb army took over Srebrenica in July 1995, and there were deaths and executions after that. That's what is called in the West the Srebrenica massacre. But in fact, that's really mainly a political construct. The numbers executed there were probably in the order of between 500 and 1,000. In other words, less than half of the, the number of civilians, Serb civilians, killed before July 1995. And the Western claim is that 8,000 men and boys were executed in the, quote, Srebrenica massacre. But notice these were men, they're almost always men, all men. Mm-hmm. They were all, all soldiers, whereas those 2,383 civilians killed included very large numbers of women and children. You're talking about the execution in the second massacre of essentially uh, army people. And of course, they, they have never proved that there were seven or 8,000 even men and boys killed. The bodies in the graves added up to something like 2,500. An awful lot of those bodies were combat deaths. Mm-hmm. One of the beauties of the Western propaganda system is that all the bodies they find after July 1995, they, they count as executed, even though we know very well that a large number of them were killed in Combat. Just a reminder, you're listening to an interview with Dr. Edward Herman. Also, another important fact about the Srebrenica massacre mm-hmm. is that all those killings of Serbs took place coming out of an area that was supposed to be a safe haven. Srebrenica was a safe place, a safe haven. Mm-hmm. It was supposed to be demilitarized, but never was. So the Bosnian Muslim soldiers would come out of Srebrenica and mm-hmm. they would kill Serb civilians. This is all completely ignored in in the Western media. It's as if the Serbs came in in July 1995 and started to kill arbitrarily. In Mm -hmm. fact, the UN military head uh, in that area, a French official named Philippe Morillon, Mm -hmm. was asked by the Yugoslav tribunal why the Serbs did it. He said he absolutely convinced they did it because of what the commander of Trebinich's Bosnian Muslims did to the Serbs before July 1995. This is the UN army head. It, you won't see that in the Western press. But the, in other words, the first massacre is what led to the lesser second massacre of mainly military age people. Mm-hmm. So the whole business of the Srebrenica massacre is a gigantic political fraud. I mean, it was a massacre, but it was a responsive vengeance massacre. Women and children were not killed. In fact, one of the features of the quote Srebrenica massacre, that is the second one, mm-hmm. is that 20,000 Srebrenica women and children were bust to safety by the Serb army. So the women and children were not killed, only military age people, and a very large fraction of those that did die, died in combat. So my own estimate, as I say, is that maybe there were 500 to 1,000 executions, vengeance executions. I'm sorry, how many? 500 to 1,000, I would say. 500 to 1,000? Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. So there was a significant massacre, but 
put it in its context. This was a war. This was an army that had seen their own civilians massacred on a much larger scale. Right. That is completely suppressed in the West. As if the Serbs came into Srebrenica and started to kill because of a bloodlust. I mean, it's absolutely a fraud. So I regard the uh, Srebrenica massacre as a tremendous propaganda trial. Mm -hmm. The West wanted to go after Serbia, and they avoided peace, and they needed this massacre. You said about 2,380 civilians, women and children mainly. Is that women and children, yes. Were killed initially. This was the Srebrenica, the first massacre. The first massacre. Of, from between 1992 and July 1995. Mm -hmm. These were Serb civilians. There were also hundreds of Serb military killed in that period. I'm just talking mm -hmm. about civilians. These were the civilians, right. And then yeah. in retaliation, approximately 2,500 Muslims Muslim, Bosnian Muslims um, soldiers were killed. No, that's a little, that's misleading because the thrust of the 8,000 claim is that they were executed. Okay. But those 2,000 plus that were killed, a very large fraction were killed in combat. In combat, okay. Yes. I see. I and see. the executions were, as I say, probably in the order of 500 to 1,000. Okay. So those were Bosnian Muslims who were found to be directly responsible for killing massive numbers of Serbian civilians, right? The Serbs actually had lists of, of Bosnian Muslim soldiers they wanted to get. But I can't honestly say they're the only ones that were executed. I see. But certainly a significant number of those executed were on those lists, I see. those vengeance lists. Uh -huh. You are listening to an interview with Dr. Edward Herman. He's an American economist and media analyst with a specialty in corporate and regulatory issues. He's a professor emeritus of finance at the Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania. He's also the author of many books, including Manufacturing Consent and the Srebrenica Benica Massacre, Evidence, Context, and Politics. That was the end of Part 1. You can find Part 2 on our website at english.ruvr.ru. Thanks for listening, and as always, I wish you the best.